disclaimer! Hey, today's a special day. Today's the day that I review the last album from Marilyn rapper Logic, the sequel to his debut album that is regarded as his best work in his entire career. Yes, boys and girls, that album is no pressure. Now, I feel like I gotta set the stage for this review so you can understand how everything led up for me. It was summer of 2017. I'm grinding on YouTube, spending months to make one video. Mental health is rapidly depleting. I'm constantly in the Bean Coven Discord. Life is great. A friend of mine messages me to listen to a song called Killing Spree by some dude named Logic. I ignored this because I really couldn't care about his shit music taste. Eventually, I get bored enough when I throw the song on while doing some shit. I honestly can't remember. And I just hear those wonderful opening lines. And I shut the song off and immediately start clowning my friend for liking that shit. And in just a few weeks, I would be listening more and more to that song, and then a few more, then I'd be watching interviews, then I'm watching the Genius Lyric videos that this dude did, then I'm listening to the entire Everybody album, then I'm downloading all his works and listening to those, then I'm going to my first year of high school, blasting Bobby Tarantino, Under Pressure, and Welcome to Forever, then I'm going through shit in my relationship, and Welcome to Forever is what's getting me through it, next thing I know, I'm single, riding the bus, listening to Shinedown, Linkin Park, and NF, then and Justice for None drops, and I'm listening to Five Finger Death Punch. And then, one day, the Young Sinatra comes back. And I'm back to listening to the Young Sinatra trilogy, finding out that it's helping me get through the sad times, constantly distracting me from any thought I have of that relationship. Fast forward, it's August 2018. I'm at Yellowstone, sitting in the lobby of a hotel because the internet is utter fucking trash in my room. And I'm listening to the new YS4 Freestyle released that day, absolutely losing my mind at it. And I'm immediately making memes for my Logic fan page that's doing pretty well. Eventually, the album drops. I do a reaction video for it. I give a lot of positives about the album and then eventually just start getting bored. And the worry I had of Logic not delivering a young Sinatra album is starting to grow true. This leads to the Rat Pack finding the video and putting me in one of the most depressed states I have ever been. The fan base I surrounded myself in the most, that I felt at home being in, that I felt was a second family to me, that I met so many great people through, has now turned around and started telling me to kill myself, burn my merch, and that I'm no longer a part of that family. Now, my once great fan page that I had so much fun with just makes me sad to be on, so it slowly dies until I fully log out of it in 2019. Soon enough, I'm sitting in chemistry, just got done taking a test, and I go on Twitter to see that Logic dropped a new song. I give it a listen and it gives me vibes to Under Pressure, and then I find out he's got a new album coming out. Supermarket then drops, I listen to a few tracks, realize it's trash like I expected, and move on. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind is released and I listen to it the second it drops. And every track that goes by starts sounding the same with generic trap beats and basic lyrics about having money and fucking bitches. By the end of it, I'm broken. Logic continues to release songs and verses, and I feel ultimately nothing when listening to them. Well, except for the Isis verse. And then we make it to 2020, where Logic announces his retirement along with the release date to his sequel to Under Pressure. Something that I've always thought was kind of trying to regain his old fans e and I ultimately feel nothing about the news of him leaving. The fact that I feel nothing is what makes me sad, because just three years ago, I was getting sad over him saying Ultra 85 would be his last. So there you go, now you know the mindset I was in, and all the shit that led up to this album for me personally. I think we should just get right into this review, because I have a lot and nothing to say. Hey, no pressure, never graduated, but I school him like professor, growing up the world. No pressure musically brings these really nice lo-fi-esque roads, with boom bap drums that also kind of sound like they've been lo-fied a bit. The song opens up to Thalia welcoming everyone to the No Pressure program, and a sample of Orson Welles that's cut off by Logic at certain points to fit as the introduction of this album. I myself did kind of the same thing with an old 2011 Logic video to start off a trash mixtape I made. Logic raps on the song about his old life growing up in Maryland while also spitting some bars about his past concept work that was going on through his albums, and Solid Snake. He also has a line about how he's still in the top three, which... It's a theme that's throughout this album and absolutely hilarious given how his last two projects were the worst albums of his career and of that year alone. Overall, the song is kind of reminiscent of his past work and I guess it's a decent opener to the album. I think it's gonna be a good day, homie got the nine in the glove and he don't play. In my line has Logic talking to God once again after not speaking to him since writing that letter eight years ago. Logic on the track talks about game violence, politics, Twitter, movements, and overall the world just being a shit place. The pre-chorus and chorus on the other hand kind of doesn't fit with the verse in my opinion, but I will say I don't mind the singing done by Logic on here. The song musically brings boom bap percussion, a chopped up piano, and an insane bass. Like god damn that bass sound alone just hits. It's a good song overall. You and me. Go live together in this perfect harmony. GP4 is the fourth installment in the Growing Pains trilogy. 
so I guess now it's a quadrilogy. Logic adding a fourth thing to a trilogy isn't surprising. The song features Andre 3K in a very weird, trippy, groovy beat while Logic raps about all sorts of shit. Starting off with kind of just rambling about things and going into talking about Maryland and his upbringing, then having this really long punchline to a B.I.G. track that was really unnecessary, and then going on about sampling a song from Erica Badu, and then going back to punchlines. It's overall a really messy song, and I personally think it's trash compared to the other three Growing Pains installments. Andre 3K was great, though. That's why your girl's all on my dick. I make them come, boy, you make them sick. My network get the... Celebration features a chopped up soul instrumental over a boom bap beat and logic rapping about punchlines for most of his first verse, then ending it off on haters and how him and everyone else should live their life the way they wanna. And also that he should rap about whatever he wants to rap about. Which, yeah, he can. Doesn't mean that it's gonna be good. Then we get a verse from Silas, which honest to god I couldn't give a shit about because Silas isn't that good and last I paid any bit of attention to him was when he couldn't take criticism in the fucking slightest. But his verse then goes into Logic's last verse, where he just talks about making bitches come and more punchlines, and the song ends off with another Thalia skit. Which I guess the Thalia skits are the only thing in here that really drive the sequel as a sequel, because they also have pretty useless information. Overall, the song's just kind of there, and I really don't understand why this was put on here, or at least why it's the fourth track. I guess it would have been fine as an outro, but having it as the fourth track is just kind of weird. Open mic has logic going back to having substance in his lyrics, talking about how he was born to rap, his growing up, a bit of his recent years. Then he goes into being sad and about how money doesn't make you happy, which is rich coming from the guy who made two albums based on it. Then he ends off his verse about fame and continues with punchlines and bragging, and also saying that he's got no whack shit. <laughs> The beat then goes from this nightclub piano with a boom bap beat to just a chopped up piano on another boom bap beat where we start the song Aquarius 3. Aquarius 3 then has Logic having the most substance on this album so far, talking about his hatred for fame lately and him trying to be a good father. He also says that he wouldn't want to mention having a kid prior because he thought people would hate it. So I guess he just decided to rap about money and bitches instead. Right, then. But then Logic kind of gets back into coasting and rhyming words that rhyme and overall not really saying anything apart from a few lines and then ending with a reference to Thomas. Overall, it's a fine song that I feel is just a bit too all over the place. Goddamn, goddamn conversations with people. Crazy how one day the legends forget that. Soul Food 2 is the sequel to one of the best songs in Under Pressure. The song musically is just a pitched up version of the original Soul Food beat with maybe different drums. It's fine, I guess, but the entire time it just made me want to go listen to the original song. Lyric-wise, he comes in with the same exact flow as the original song, which, once again, made me just want to go listen to that. But on here, he raps about modern-day life and more punchlines, but admittedly, some of them are pretty good. Towards the end of the verse, he starts rapping about when he got into XXL, and then he just kind of says it's a story for another time, and then never brings it up again like he's J.J. Abrams during the Star Wars sequels. A good question for another time. And then the song switches up. Logic starts rapping on a calm, vocal-fueled boom bap beat about his old concept story, which is just, why is this on the album? More specifically, why is it on this song? And why couldn't he have just told this instead of giving us two trap albums, a rock album, and a pop boom bap album? It's a weird inclusion, and honestly, I'm not a big fan of it. The song prior is fine, though, but again, just made me want to go listen to the original, which is far superior, in my opinion. Bitch, I did it. I made it. I'm loved and I'm hated. I started from the bottom, now my name... Why? Perfect is a turn-up song where the production is kind of reminiscent of something like Boys in the Hood where Logic starts rapping about his fame and how it brings people wanting money. Which I was all for, and then he just immediately goes into brag rapping, and then leaves, and the song's only a minute and 40 seconds. This was necessary for the Under Pressure sequel? Look, I know Under Pressure had a turn-up song itself, but for one, it was to calm down after all the dark, fucked-up shit being told, which this album hasn't said as much as that one did. And also, it was a lot longer and didn't feel so unfinished. Yeah, this didn't need to be here. Man I Is starts with the same sample found on Addiction, which pissed me off when I first heard it because it sounded like nostalgia bait to me. Nonetheless, Logic raps over a very, very chill boom bap beat about his upbringing who influenced him and his modern day life. And then he just ends off the second verse saying that he has to cut it short because he doesn't have time anymore, which... 
feels really unnecessary and sounded lazy. Overall, it's a fine song. God damn, already had a hard life once. Am I supposed to recreate it every album for you? Dadbot has logic rapping about his actual modern life for once, even going to the extent of rapping about his day-to-day -day life in the third verse, which is probably the best verse on this entire album up to this point. I do not care. It's at least substance and gives us a look at his life now. Overall, not much else to say about the song other than it's currently the best on the album. Oh yeah, and it also ends with this phone call that hurts because the sound quality is utter garbage, but that's on purpose, so whatever. Uh, which then leads into the next song. Motivated by paper and pussy, always been a passion. Whipping that Chevrolet and pile my... Five Hooks has logic rapping about fame, a bit of his mental health, and at one point kind of starts talking about the lead up in his career and where it is at now but then going back to just doing what the rest of the song is, which is just random punchlines that mean absolutely nothing. This is probably one of the weakest songs on the album, in my opinion. Depressing anxiety got a hold of me cause people say they want the old of me. Well, I'm 30 to stop. Dad Bot is no longer the best song in the album. Dark Place has this very dark and just amazing beat while Logic stays on topic through the entire song rapping about his mental health, and how music has made a massive impact on it. I wish I had more to say about it, but I can't, and I think that's kind of good. It's straight to the point, and Logic, for once on this album, stays to a topic during the entire song, and it comes out great. Hey, I've been real, that's all I ever knew how to be. Fuck what you heard, I only write what I see. Second I A to Z has Logic just spinning punchlines that lets him say the entire alphabet, which is cool. But one, I wish there wasn't the voice that highlights when a letter has been said. I think the song would have been a lot better if you had to follow along and find everything yourself. But two, the concept leads to the song having little to no substance. Once again, don't really feel like it's necessary for an under pressure sequel. It's a fine song though, with a weird outro. Personally, I still prefer the A to Z bars on Khan's remix of Rap God. Good enough, they say I ain't hood enough. Even if I sign the Yeezy, I wouldn't be good enough. You heard him say his logic rapping over a Kanye type beat about his growing up and him making it through his career. And then during the third verse, he has a few bars about his modern life. And the fourth verse has him rapping about his mental health and a bit more of his modern life and being a father. And then Thalia switches from an outro of no pressure to an intro of Ultra 85 and we're given one song that could possibly resemble an Ultra 85 song. Overall, it's once again, fine. Amen. 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 Amen is a love letter to the Rat Pack, thanking them for being there when Logic went through his highs and lows. Then in the third verse, he goes into once again his come up, and then ends it by saying, now it's time to conclude the incredible true story of transformation salutations. And then the next track, Obediently Yours, is just a six minute sample that works as an outro of the album. Overall, this is a fine outro, but the whole Ultra 85 conclusion thing is still just kind of weird for me, because I feel like the story was never really told. Kind of wish I could go to an alternate universe where Ultra 85 was the last album we could have seen the full story and what it would have been. So I gotta go, it's logic. The one nobody would vouch for. How's that shit for an outro? Overall, this album's fine. It's got some parts on it that I like lyrically, and the instrumentals are mostly solid. There are some tracks on here that I feel like are unnecessary, like Celebration, Perfect, A to Z, and the second half of Soul Food 2. And while the lyrics are obviously a big step up from his last two albums, and probably his best lyrically since Under Pressure, sadly, they are one of the two faults I have with this album. I feel like lyrically, half this album says nothing, and is filled with logic just saying punchlines that have absolutely no meaning and the other half is him just kind of repeating himself and saying the same things we've already known. There are times where he does talk about new things, like on Dad Bod or Dark Place, but I feel like there was a lot of stuff he could have talked about instead of just telling us that he grew up in the ghetto for the millionth time. I would have enjoyed him talking more about him leaving the internet and being a father instead of getting a decent amount of bars about it, but still being very surface level about the topic, and possibly even like address the fact that he blatantly lied during the promotion of Confessions. I don't know, to me this album was just kind of repetitive, like Logic felt like he only had a handful of things to talk about. Granted, I guess the repetitive nature of topics like this are better than the repetitive nature of topics like on Confessions, but still. Also, the bars about how he's still the greatest is rich when his last album he dropped was Confessions. Imagine the non-self-awareness and or the ego that would go into saying you're the greatest after releasing that. The other fault I have with this album that doesn't really lie with the album is just... I feel nothing listening to it. As I mentioned before, Confessions absolutely broke me, and since then I haven't been able to listen to anything Logic's released post that album and feel any emotion towards it. Which sucks. 
because I really wish I could be blasting this album during the send off of Logic's career, but this just does nothing for me. I give this album about a 5 out of 10. Lyrically, it's a step up, but still kind of dull to me. Instrumentally, it's great, but I grade shit on my enjoyability, and I can't really say I enjoy this album as much as I wish I could have. And if you want to say that I haven't given the album enough time and I need to listen to it more, that may work for you, but I have never once in my life listened to an album that I got nothing out of multiple times and ended up liking it. But, I will always be listening to the old work, and Logic will always have a place in my heart for the impact his music had on my life. But, I guess it's time to say farewell. Anyway guys, that's the video. What did you think of the album? Leave it in the comments down below. I already know people love it a lot currently, but I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how the reception is going to be in about a month when the hype dies down. But I also might not look at the comments, because as I've stated before, Rat Pack has trouble understanding opinions. And being completely honest, I'm a little bitch, so I might stay away. If you liked what you liked though, then go ahead and click that like button. It's especially going to help if this gets dislike bombed like the YS4 reaction, but it also makes me feel kind of good. Also, if you want to, go ahead and subscribe. I have a discography of Logic Redo video that I'm working on. I can now finish due to no pressure being out, so you know. If that sounds up your alley, then yeah, subscribe. Or if you like Batman, because I'm working on a pretty big series based on it. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as well. Don't really post much on there, but you can follow me anyways if you feel like it. I also make music myself, which is usually just genre-bending instrumentals. But like, once a year will I make a rap song. So if you like that kind of shit, then it's all available on YouTube and Bandcamp with a handful of songs on SoundCloud and Spotify. And last but not least, I have a community Discord server called Hell World Weebs and Memes. So if you're a weeb and or you like memes and want to be a part of a community we're trying to build and also want to play a part in Doctor and help it from dying, then the link to that is in the description and comment section. Anyways, have a good day. Y'all know this is my opinion, right? Peace out.